Welcome to the Dairy News and Views podcast, a production of the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Dairy Team. Our podcast covers current educational, research, and industry tools available for your operation to manage healthy cows and calves while producing the highest quality dairy products. Thanks for joining us today on Dairy News and Views from the ISU Dairy Team. I'm Jen Bentley, Northeast Iowa Dairy Field Specialist. And I'm here today with my colleague from Northwest Iowa, our dairy field specialist, Fred Hall, as we discuss today's topic. Fred and I both attended World Dairy Expo last week and delivered an expo seminar on spreadsheets, apps, and software for your dairy. So welcome back to the podcast, Fred. Well, thank you. I tell you, it was sure an enjoyable World Dairy Expo after being vacant for a year. Yeah, I would say so too. There was a lot of good camaraderie between friends and family that all came back together and enjoyed a lot of the cattle shows and lots of new booths and and exhibits this year. You know, I've always went to Expo as part of the the cattle show. So this is actually the first time I was ever in the exhibit hall and really was impressed by what was there, the number of vendors and the equipment there. Of course, I enjoyed the milking shorthorn and brown Swiss shows. Uh, It's always fun to be around to show people that I I worked with for 20 years. Uh, We also have to give a shout out to our ISU dairy judging team for the third place finish. And in the youth fitting contest, Iowa was really well represented. Uh, Jonathan Krogman won the intermediate division. Uh, Jonathan's from Ashton and Cole Cruz from Dyersville was first place in the senior division. Yeah, that was great to see a lot of that, those youth competing and especially from Iowa. So we had some good representation and hopefully we continue that youth being there at the World Dairy Expo. Um, I was there on Tuesday and there was a lot of FFA students from all over, you know, the Midwest attending that day. So it was great to see them interacting with the exhibits and the industry representatives. You know, that's a great place for youth to get um, some interest in the dairy industry, whether it's working on the farm or lots of job potentials there. Um, I know I brought my son over that day. And so he had some good experiences talking with industry reps and, you know, trying to get a feel for the different careers that could be involved with the dairy industry. It was a great day. And of course, we didn't miss out on the grilled cheese or the ice cream either. Absolutely. This year, and maybe they've done it before, but each day they had a featured cheese in the grilled cheese. And boy, I really like that hot pepper cheese. That was excellent. So that gets my endorsement. It was pretty exciting that, uh, you know, Fred and myself and our colleague, Larry Trannel, uh, were invited to speak as part of an expo seminar this year. So I had never done that for World World Dairy Expo. So that was pretty neat. So in today's podcast, we're going to share some of what we presented there at World Dairy Expo on some common spreadsheets, apps, and software that we've seen producers use, industry use. And, you know, prior to the World Dairy Expo, I had surveyed some producers on common apps that they have on their phone. And Fred shared some of the common apps that he's been using, as well as Larry shared some of the spreadsheets that he works with producers on. So we kind of gave a pretty quick presentation in about 45 minutes. So it was more of a lightning round, I felt, with all the different apps and softwares that we shared. But um, so we're going to share some of those out here Um, I guess I can start out, Fred, and just talk about some of the ones that I had presented on in surveying some of our producers, you know, what are some common apps that they use on their phone from day to day, or maybe just on their computer. I did good feedback on using Google Sheets as one of their uh, common apps that they use, whether it's on their phone or maybe just on their computer, but Google Sheets seem to be a very common thing for lots of things on the dairy for tracking inventory, bills, working with employees on, you know, vacation or invoicing, um, making graphs where you can track milk yield and those different components and be able to, you know, project things from year to year just using those Google Sheets. You know, you can create formulas on them. So a lot of different ways that I see producers using 
Google Sheets there. Fred, do you have any experience with you either using Google Sheets or producers using them? The common thread that I, I hear from producers is that it's shareable. You know, it's not just notes for yourself, but if you're using it uh, instead of a whiteboard, everybody who needs to know that information has access to it. And that, that's pretty cool because everybody it seems is carrying a smartphone in their pocket or on them someplace. Yeah, I would agree. And speaking of communication, there was three that stood out to me as far as, you know, what they're using for communication on the farm. And one was called a Trello app. They used it for communication between employees. So like you said, Fred, they're get, kind of getting away from that standard whiteboard and going more towards you know, looking at their electronic device for a whiteboard. So making barn lists or to-do lists, and then they can share those out with, you know, the employees that need to see those lists and be able to virtually, you know, check them off and know that things are getting done pretty efficiently. The other one that I found that people were using is the GroupMe app. And I gave an example of actually the ISU Dairy using this app as they're working with, uh, you know, a lot of different students and employees on the farm. They, they created a basically a communication thread between the group that is milking the cows. And so they can communicate back and forth on this is what you need to think about for tonight's milking shift or somebody can't be, milk the next morning. So they're looking for somebody to fill in. So it seems like it's just a really quick way of communicating and helping close that communication gap. The other one that I saw was uh, Notes or Evernote app. So the Notes would be more of an iPhone app and Evernote could be used for iPhone or Android. But again, it's just another way of keeping track of things right in your phone. So I gave an example of a producer using this to keep track of calf health on their farm. So they took a picture of the calf they were treating that day with the calf number. They took the calf's temperature and recorded it and then recorded any treatments that they gave that calf. And within the notes app, then you're able to, you know, send it as a text message or send it as an email to maybe somebody who's going to be taking care of those calves the next day or morning. One of the things that I, I see that all the time with is we get the note down and it becomes permanent. So the next person who didn't do that, but needs to know what that calf's been treated with, has that information. You know, that that's really important that we don't treat more than we need to because we just didn't know, or we miss a treatment. Having it in your hand is super logical way to use this technology. I found producers using it to monitor employees. So if you want to capture a note about something you want to talk about with them later, or maybe in a upcoming performance review, you can make those comments in the notes app and easily refer back to them at a later date. I don't know about you, Fred, but um, I can't remember everything every day. So I have to write things down or type it into my phone. Absolutely. You know, looking at uh, calf and cattle health, the other apps that we talked about were using University of Wisconsin's Madison School of Veterinary Medicine health apps. And they have about a dozen apps uh, you can find on their website. And these are more specifically for iPad and iPhone, but ones that I find common being used is the calf health score. So it gives actual pictures of calves and you can easily relate to what a healthy calf looks like versus what maybe a sick calf looks like. Um, so I found that one very commonly used as well as um, a freestall assessor. And so whether you're working on a farm or maybe you work out in industry and you visit a lot of farms, I find this a great tool when you're working on the farm to, you know, if you're measuring those stalls, be able to plug it into that assessor and see, is that stall short? Is the brisket located correctly? It quickly gives you a, a yes or no answer as far as um, are these adequate and comfortable for the cows? Do you use any of these health apps from UW as well? Probably the two that I, I pull out for specific instances is that TDN score and then the body condition score. You know, I think we all need to kind of sometimes get back to the basics of, of those kind of things. As I walk through, that tends to be two that every couple months I, I pull out, dust off and, and use it. Then I went into using the thermal imaging camera. This was actually suggested by our colleague, Brian Doherty, who's our 
Northeast Iowa Ag Engineer, uh, something that he uses out in the field, but I can see how it could be very applicable for a lot of different things, but it's uh, basically just an attachment with a USB port that goes into your phone and it's a little camera extension. It measures thermal imaging. So basically measures differences in temperature. And the video that I had displayed at World Dairy Expo was Brian going out in the field and taking a look at surface temperature of the soil on bare ground versus temperature of going out into a field where there's a lot of green still left out in the field, but I can see where you can use this as well when you start opening up bunkers and uh, want to see where things might be heating. I think I'm going to probably end up purchasing one of those and try to use it out in the field. In conversations uh, with producers at Expo, that seemed to be one where they might be uh, ahead of us. Uh, three of the bigger producers I talked to over uh, in Madison, they said, oh yeah, we we use that quite a bit with our uh, silage piles. You're right. We probably need to own as we uh, get out there and work with producers and piles. Some of the other apps that I uh, came across was using some type of light meter. Uh, so whether it's a Lux light meter that's found on the iPhone or maybe a similar app on the Android, you know, again, just a handy tool if you're out in different barns being able to track what that light is in different barns, because we know if our lighting isn't correct in the holding pen and parlor area, those cows have a hard time coming, wanting to come into the parlor. So tracking what the light is in there, as well as other parts of the barn, freestyle barn, have a treatment room. We want to make sure we have proper lighting for, you know, just working with those cattle, or if we have a vet coming in to do surgery, you really want to make sure we have adequate lighting in those areas as well. So I find that kind of a handy app just for general use of kind of troubleshooting different areas of the barns. And then just a fun one that I put in there was sharing the dairy story through social media. So a lot of our producers these days have some type of social media page, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, and the examples that I used at World Dairy Expo was two of our Iowa producers using TikTok now is seems to be the new social media platform for our even younger generation as a way to get information across to them. So these two Iowa dairy producers, uh, Megan Kregel and Dan Ventiker, both have accounts that are widely used across the U.S. Uh, the one that I showed the other day with Megan's hoof trimming day, it's gotten over five and a half million views. So I think that's pretty incredible if we are talking about sharing our dairy story message to our consumers and helping them understand what goes on on a dairy farm from day to day, but also trying to make it fun for those people uh, learning about the dairy industries. Two of our uh, larger dairies that were very active with the Western Iowa Dairy Alliance, and they both posting fairly regularly. And it's a way to tell our story. Uh, there's a lot of media out there that takes a small slice of something bad and paints a whole industry. So when they have the adopt a calf where every few days they have another picture of the calf or another stage in its life, that gives consumers a real accurate description of what, what goes on in in, in this case, a uh, baby calf's life. So Fred, you had some apps that you shared that day as well. You want to walk through those too? Yep, sure can. And, and Larry may have mentioned this one, but uh, the Midwest Cover Crop Council uh, has a cover crop decision tool. Put in your information and it'll give you choices. Uh, some, you know, this one is fits your area for what you want. This is maybe a second choice, or here's one that uh, you really shouldn't use in program you're trying to design. Uh, the one that I, I think most of us grew up with, the web soil survey, you know, when it was big books and you had to find out where you were. And uh, now it's an app and you can open it up and it tells you what the soil profile is underneath your feet. And a lot of times, uh, if you're considering expansion, knowing will this soil support lagoon? Will it support building construction? Or, you know, a lot of times when I'm out doing peak with our 
first cutting alfalfa and I see a, a yellow spot in the field, it helps me understand, okay, is it having some issues with fertility that's inherent to that parent soil type? So that's a, a kind of a neat thing. And if you put it on your computer, then you can actually create the maps that we were traditionally grew up with. Yeah, I think it's one of those that people kind of get used to and would be able to use. My number one app that I use is called Mile IQ. It's a mileage tracker and log. And, you know, I've got several producers who have enterprises. One's a dairy and has a Finnish hog operation. Several have agronomy divisions and they can log if this truck is dairy mileage or hog mileage. You know, they can really dial down and know when they're driving, what are they spending I like it because as I'm working with dairymen, I can identify whether it's a personal mile or a mile for business. You know, it's really easy. Everyone carries their cell phone with them. And at the end of the week, you can click on that app and just slide right or left. Then at the end of the month or end of the week, you can print out the spreadsheet that breaks everything down, and gives you your totals. So that's one that, like I said, I know I use almost every day. We were talking a little about Wisconsin apps. Uh, the Hay Pricing app is one of those that, you know, when it spring comes and guys are figuring out some hay, pulling that up, indicating where you're at and what the type of hay, then you can can go in and evaluate what yields could be and your number of cuttings, and it'll give you the value, uh, total harvest value, give you some cost information, and then break it down by first, second, third, and fourth cutting. So that's pretty useful app. Then I talked about uh, ag tools and I know, uh, you know, I've got three pages of apps or had, and when I found this ag tools, I eliminated a full page because this ag tools app has a lot of those that I was using all in one place. So I can open it up and just with my thumb, scroll down and get the hay pricing app or, or get some of those that I, I use pretty regularly. I downloaded it after you had presented and it covers quite a wide range of agriculture. So I think there's a little bit for, for everybody there. You know, Absolutely. Useful apps. Yep. Then I had two more there, or three more that I talked about, the uh, insect identifier. More and more as we're working a lot around commodity buildings and piles, you know, we've got to be aware of some of the, the insects that are causing some problems. And what I like about insect identifier is you make that picture and man it hasn't skunked me yet it just, sometimes it may give me two or three choices that i have to kind of look at okay is it indigenous to this area or am i seeing it in a, a life stage difference but i really think it's probably for agriculture as good as as any of them out there yeah, Fred, I also have that on my phone. And unfortunately, I found the fall armyworm using it the other weekend when I was working outside. So I know that's been a troublesome bug that's kind of traveled up here in the Midwest. And so it definitely identified it. Absolutely. That's good. Then the, the same type of program, but for plant or weed identifier, uh, one I use is called plant identifier. And because it not only will look in, in one area, but it'll give you the range. If you're right on the edge, if you get a decent picture, you know, you've got to maybe clean out the other species away from it and shoot the picture. Again, it'll generally identify it or give you a couple of choices that you got to drill down on. One that I, I use quite a bit because I'm not a agronomist or horticulturalist, and sometimes I'm stumped on these plants. 
one that I use occasionally when I'm, you know, for instance, standing in the freestall and I want to see, you know, is that breastboard in the right place or that neck rail in the right place? Uh, or if I'm curious, you know, how wide is this doorway? You know, those are the kind of things that measure is really good for. It won't measure how long the barn is. You've got to be within three or four foot of what you're looking at, but it does do an excellent job down to, I believe it's an eighth of an inch. So then one that I, I threw out there is a fun one uh, because we travel and a lot of dairy producers travel. You get out of your area and you maybe don't know where the right places for fuel. A gas buddy, wherever you are, it will give you a choice if there's been entries made in that area. Uh, when I was coming across to Madison, knew I was going to have to fuel at some point, and I hit that, and station on the interstate was 309, one mile south of the interstate, I found gas for 268. So certainly helps out in the, the pocketbook when you know where the, the cheaper fuel is. That was the ones that I talked about. Uh, Larry did his part of the, the program. Some really interesting graphs. Now, if you've worked with Larry, you know he puts a lot of information into a chart or a graph, but uh, really did a neat job of explaining, for instance, the Dairy Trans spreadsheet he's got there. Which was the one you got the most out of, Jen? Yeah, you know, I've seen Larry use the Dairy Trans for quite a few years now. It's um, kind of his trademark spreadsheets and it just is really a handy, I guess, way to benchmark a producer. And particularly now he's got it set up where you can benchmark a farm against like dairy. So whether you're a grazing farm or you're organic, conventional, different um, rolling herd average ranges, he's got enough data now to, that has been compiled where we can really benchmark. And I just really like how it's laid out and kind of gives you a good score at the end, whether you know, here are some areas that you need to work on, whether that's labor efficiency or maybe it's feed cost or uh, different uh, costs within the dairy there. You know, it's available online, but really, if you can get one-on-one -on -one with Larry to walk through it, I think that's the most beneficial because he has the most, you know, experience working with that. Um, the other one that I find useful and that I've been using with producers as we see people making decisions on, you know, converting maybe a tie stall or a parlor to automatic milking systems is that partial budget. So it allows you to maybe speculate on what you might expect from installing an automatic milking system, plugging in numbers that you're using now for milk production, somatic cell count, reproduction numbers, and then based on some survey work that we've done, estimate what you might see after you've made an installation to robots. You know, obviously there's a lot of things that come into play with facilities and cow comfort that can play a role in that. But I think it really does uh, give you a, a good visual of, of what could be expected there, either positively or negatively for the farm, you know, management wise or financially as well. This calculator doesn't have any sales component. Like you said, it's from research that we've done in the region. So as producers are trying to answer some pretty important questions that'll affect them for the next 15 to 20 years, picking up all the information they can as far as projections is really what they need. And this calculator does that in spades. Yeah, so that's been a very useful one here in the last few years. You know, Larry concluded with his presentation just kind of covering the basics of our ag decision maker. So this is a, a website that the farm management team has really put together. And Fred, I don't know how many hundreds of spreadsheets are on here, but um, basically if you're looking for a spreadsheet, go to this website, search it up. I'm sure you can find it. Would you agree, Fred? 
Absolutely. I was told one time there's about 500 spreadsheets and they go from uh, agronomy to dairy to a honeybee spreadsheet or honey spreadsheet. So a lot of information, you know, Jen, a uh, list of apps and software could go on forever. One of the neat things was you got to use the new Slido software during our presentation that allowed us to be interactive with our audience. Share how that was used. Yeah, so that was the first time I've used that software. And, um, you know, like with any technology, I had a few blips. It was supposed to be basically incorporated into my PowerPoint, but I think due to some firewalls, it wasn't allowing me to use it, you know, right within my PowerPoint. So I just went out to the Slido website and developed my question there. And so what it does is allows you to interactively work with your audience. So I, I posed a question to our audience last week, asking them, what are some common apps that they have on their phone, what they're using and what they're used for. And they just basically scanned in a QR code that I had on the screen and it took them directly to that website and they could virtually type in their answer and we could see those live answers right on the screen as long as we had an internet connection. And I think that's a great way to interact with our audience um, if we're dealing with a lot of people on a live you know, presentation. It's just kind of fun to be able to do that. So I thought that was kind of a neat experience to do with our group. You know, looking back at the program, it really does point out that apps change every day, that while we use them, it was fun to hear what the producers who attended are using. You know, we, I think we both picked up some things out there that we weren't aware of. So while it was the first time that we as a team presented on that topic. I think that we proved ourselves that it's something producers use every day. Yeah, I would agree, Fred. And, you know, just being out at World Dairy Expo, walking through the exhibits, just about every industry now has an app for their software. So you could fill up your phone pretty fast with apps if you wanted to. Absolutely. Well, we hope our audience found these tips helpful and in sharing these may provide you or the people that you work with some additional resources to help you run your dairy more efficiently, uh, maybe have some fun with some of these apps. And we want to thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to visiting with you on the next Dairy News and Views from ISU. This institution is an equal opportunity provider for the full non-discrimination statement or combination inquiries. Go to www dot extension dot ia state dot edu backslash diversity backslash ext